So today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a water pump in your Nissan pickup truck. This is a 97. Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Facebook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. Alright guys, and here's the tools you're going to need for today's project. I got a hammer, a Phillips head, a stubby Phillips head screwdriver, a big flathead screwdriver. I used this long pair of needle nose pliers in today's project, but I didn't show it. But I also used this to assist me to put on the nuts for the fan clutch. Also, you're going to need a 3 8 ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket, an extension. A magnet is also very helpful with a 12 millimeter combination wrench and a 10 millimeter combination wrench and a drain pan and of course coolant to replenish what you lose and also I use some electrical tape as well to do some tape here on a combination wrench you'll hear about that later on in the video so with all that said we'll go ahead and begin today's project okay guys now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our air box here and we've got to get our radiator and the fan shroud and the fan and all that stuff out of the way so we can access our water pump in so the first thing we'll do is we'll remove this air box and the way we're going to go about doing that is you got these clips you're just going to push down and then we've also got these wing nuts you need to take off and then we've got two 10 millimeter fasteners holding on this tube right here and we're going to get that off and out of our way too so we're just going to spin these wing nuts off Be able to pick up on this guy right here and set them off to the side, and then I'm just gonna uh, remove these fasteners all the way, and we'll get this tube out of our way as well. And then we'll just set him off to the side there. Hey, okay, guys. And the next thing you'll do is just remove these two brackets here. Again, we got 10 millimeter fasteners. And there you go. Alright guys, and the next thing we're going to do here is work on getting this radiator hose off. You're going to want to remember to stick a drain pan directly under this piece because we're going to remove this hose here and what's going to happen is we're going to drain a bunch of fluid and you want to catch that fluid in your catch pan and it's a Phillips head screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket you'll put on here. We're going to loosen up this clamp. And once you've got them getting loosened up, go ahead and break the connection there. When the fluid starts to come out at the same time, I'm going to kind of check here at the bottom. You're going to want to do the same to make sure you're actually catching your fluid. So, oh, there we go. Drop some in. We're going to see down here where it pours out. And there we go. So, once you get your drain pan arranged in the right way, there, just go ahead and take it off and let some drain out. And then, here in just a second, I'll show you the next thing you're going to want to do. Okay, our next task is to remove four screws, okay? And we've got one that would be sitting right here, right here, and then we've got one sitting right in here, and then we're gonna have two that are also gonna be sitting down below, and let's see if I can point them out here for you. There, right there at the end of my finger, that's one, and then, of course, on the other side, you're gonna have one as well, and I've already removed this one, but he'd be sitting right down there, so just look up here from the top it's going to be down there on the bottom just like the one I showed you there but like I said that one I've already removed so we're going to go ahead and work on getting those out and basically on the top ones here I just use this screwdriver and for the the bottom two screws there you're going to need a stubby because you can't really fit a regular screwdriver in there so go ahead and remove those guys and I'll show you what's next okay guys so once you've removed those four screws your, your fan shroud here is going to be free and we're just going to pull off this hose thing right here and we may or may not be able to pull them up freely here and it looks like we're going to have to get rid of that fan first but at least we've got them out of the way and we'll work on getting that fan off so we can get your, your fan clutch or your fan assembly and this fan shroud out of the way so we'll have more room to work with here and then we'll work on getting this radiator out too. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on getting our fan out of the way and this fan shroud as well. And in order to do that, we got 
four nuts. You can see two of them right there. They're 10 millimeters. You're going to take a combination wrench. A gear wrench is really helpful here. It cuts out some of that meticulous time consuming work that you'll do with your traditional wrench. But just get your 10 millimeter wrench on there. When you go to spin it left, you might want to spin, it might try and spin this belt. So you can hold on with your hand and just really yank up on there uh, quickly with that wrench. And you'll break it loose and they come off. So here in just a moment, when I get those four off, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we're pulling all this stuff up and out of our way. Okay guys, so what happens here is basically when you get those four nuts off, you're just going to grab hold and kind of rock your fan and it'll, it'll come right off there, it shouldn't be no problem. And then we're just working on pulling this guy up and out of our way. And there you go. So your fans can come off like that along with the shaft. And now we have quite a bit more room to work with. Alright guys, now, the next thing we're going to do is, you can see this pulley here, it's the thing we took the fan off of, and basically you can just kind of pop it off the studs, and now your water pump is exposed. Now, earlier I said, oh, we're going to take the radiator off, I may have spoke too soon, I think we can probably do it without removing the radiator. Basically, we just got some bolts we got removed, we're going to pop this water pump off, slap a new one on there with a new gasket, and then... The last thing you'll do there is we'll work on getting that belt back on. So let me get our new water pump off and show you about that and tell you about that and then we'll worry about getting everything back together. Alright guys, so now we basically have five bolts we got to remove here. I tried to get you to be able to see at least one. There'll be one there and one over there. And there'll be two on the bottom. And to give you a better illustration, here's our new water pump. And you can see we got one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. And these bolts aren't there the way I took them out because the one I showed you earlier is that one right there. So just go ahead and remove those five bolts there and then we'll work on actually grabbing onto this guy. You might have to shake them around a little bit to take them off. Also, another quick thing I want to add there is when you pull this pulley out of your way, it's real easy to get a ratchet and extension like this and they're 12 millimeters if I didn't already tell you that and you just zap them or you just take your ratchet and you'll be able to access all five of them like this once you get that pulley out of the way. Alright guys, so here we are. We've got our bolts removed, so now I'm just going to grab a hold of them and just going to kind of rock them up and down, back and forth. And okay guys, now, when you get your water pump off, if you grab a hold of it and you rock it up and down and you can't seem to do, you can't seem to break the connection from the water pump in the engine, what you might want to do is take a big flathead screwdriver and a hammer on the other end and just kind of work them right in there behind it and just beat on it with a hammer a little bit and that should help break the connection between the water pump and the engine so when you do that all your coolant's going to fall out <laughs> as I just found out there so yeah now I'll show you about taking this one off and putting your new one on and all the good things you need to know about that now I'm just going to grab a hold of the old water pump there and we'll just pick them up and set them off up here Okay guys, so here's our old water pump and we can see it's rusty there. Here's our new water pump. Now, when we go into install the new water pump, all you pretty much need to know is the surface that this was attached to, you need to make sure it's nice and shiny clean, kind of like how our old water pump looks. But on this one, you can see that they used RTV to silicone it sealed there. So what I need to do is I need to scrape all that silicone off where it's mounted to the engine. And I'm not going to be able to get the camera in there real well to show you. Here, yeah, I'll make an attempt here to kind of show you what I'm talking about at least. And basically you can see right down in there, it's kind of got this stuff. If I can kind of pull it. You can see there's kind of budging. That's the RTV they used and you're going to need to remove all that. And there's two ways to seal this. You can use a gasket or you can use RTV. Now, some people are under the impression that you put RTV on your gasket. No, you do not do that. You can use what's called a gasket uh, sealer or a gasket help stick on. I can't think of the proper uh, terminology here but basically it's made by Permatex and it's a spray and you can spray it on your gasket and what that'll do is that'll help it stick and it'll help it seal the gasket better I suppose that's what they're claiming but you don't want to take silicone and put silicone on the gasket for some reason people like to do that no the gasket use the gasket by itself it's what's intended for is to seal and it's a gasket so yeah just keep that in mind so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then tell you what you need to know about installing your new water pump down there and kind of torque specs and that sort of thing. 
Okay guys, and when you're cleaning your surface here, take a razor blade and plan on spending a good 20 minutes or so to really make sure you get that surface nice and clean. And the surface I'm talking about, again, is right down there. So just make sure you really spend a good amount of time getting it nice and clean because if you want to seal properly and make sure it doesn't leak, you're going to have to do that. So next, we're going to work on getting our new water pump uh, with the new gasket put on there and getting them bolted up there and snugged in. All right, now, the way I'm gonna get this new water pump set in there is I'm gonna take the gasket and I'm gonna take the two easiest bolts and I'm gonna stick them through and have it kind of holding the gasket there. Then I'm gonna reach down in there and I'm gonna start one of the bolts and try and get the other one started, kind of both at the same time. And that way, the other three bolts will line up with the gasket there. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna snug them down kind of in a crisscross pattern, but as long as you just barely snug them down at first and then go and just tighten them down, that's how we're gonna wanna go about doing it. Okay guys, and just a second ago when I was saying uh, put, you start with these two bolts holes right here, actually the easier way when you have your gasket on your other side and you're doing your new one, I've actually already installed the new one, but the easiest way is to run your bolt through here and through here, these two top ones with your gasket on the other side, and then you just kind of set down in there and get them started. I started getting that one and then I would tighten that one. Just make sure your gasket is uh, going through the bolt or the bolt's actually going through the gasket on both sides because you want to make sure your bolts line up with the gasket. So that's how you go about doing it. Alright guys, now when it comes to putting this guy back on and getting those bolts torqued on, basically, I was looking online, I was looking for a torque spec to be able to tell you, I found one that said 6 to 9 foot pounds. I, when I went back over I checked and I did it over that but what you want to make sure that you do is you tighten them in sequence, kind of go like start from that one then maybe do that bottom one, then come back and do that one, then maybe do that bottom one and then do that one right there. Do like a star sequence when you tighten it. And first you're just going to kind of snug it till it kind of comes to a stop and then maybe do a quarter to a twelve and a half degree turn. Um, just make sure if you can feel it, make sure you're not going to strip it and yeah just make sure you snug them all down and then do about a quarter turn and that should be just fine right there just um i'm pretty sure we're dealing with aluminum here so you just want to be really careful these bolts don't go down about 60 foot pounds because i know i think for the 3.0 version this is the 2.4 is like 58 foot pounds or something like that so you definitely want to go don't want to go that tight with them so yeah just stick that and it should be fine so next we'll talk a little bit more about putting everything back together Okay guys, and the next thing I'm going to do here is we have to install these little studs. I didn't notice that, but our new power steering pump didn't come with these studs installed. And what you'll need to do is first identify the long end from the short end. The end on the left here is going to be our short end, and that's going to be the end that screws into your new water pump. And also, I'm going to be taking some Loctite or the stuff where basically you put on the threads and it's going to make sure it locks the threads in there because these studs won't need to come back out for whatever reason they just did it separately they didn't install it in there so they're having us installed in there so another thing you could do is you might could take some pliers and just really tighten them in there with a pair of pliers grab onto the threads but then you run the risk of damaging the threads and that's why I'm just going to hand tighten them in and put this thread lock stuff here on the end of the studs so yeah go ahead and install those and then we'll get that pulley we'll put the pulley over the studs and put the nuts back over the studs okay guys so our next trick is getting this pulley back up over the studs and the best way to do that is to feel for the stud with your left hand, hold your left hand right here, and with your right hand, reach up under there and just pull, and the belt will stretch enough for you to slip this pulley up over that thing. If you if you choose not to go that route, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to loosen the mounting bolts on the alternator, and then loosen up this guy right here, and then back this guy out or whatever. You're basically gonna loosen up your alternator so you could just slip your belt back on over that, but the easier and better way to go about doing that will be the way I told you to do it again is to reach up and grab with your right hand while holding with your left hand and feeling for the stud and that way you'll just pop it over there so now it's time to install our fan back and put our fan shroud back on okay now if you guys have made it this far everything else putting it back together is pretty much easy stuff here and you want to make sure to refill your coolant you're going to want to replenish what you drained out there and it's going to be a lot of coolant and just make sure you, you bleed it, you kind of run it for a while and watch it bubble down. Like when we come in here, you're going to fill it up and then it'll kind of set down while the car is running. Um, pretty much other than that, I mean, you're just going to put your fan, your fan shroud back on. 
and tighten everything up. Of course, you're going to put your air box back on, and uh, it's pretty simple from, from here on out. So that's going to conclude today's project. If I have anything else to say, you'll hear in just a second. And uh, If not, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Okay, guys, so when we went to put the fan clutch back on, I noticed it was really difficult to get the washer and nut back onto the thing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate video, and you can find this video by searching Fixbook Fan Nut. Again, Fixbook Fan Nut. Enter that search into your YouTube search bar, and I'll show you how I was able to start get the washer on there and then start the nut on there by using a wrench wearing a hoodie. Yeah, so check that out and that'll help you get those nuts started if you had trouble doing so. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9am Pacific Time, 10am Mountain Time, 11am Central Time, 12pm Eastern Time and I will see you then.